Hi, and welcome back to our Ailton tutorial series. Now, we've covered lots of fair in this series, so if you're not up to speed, then um, please check out our previous videos so you can get uh, so you can get up to date with uh, where we are now. So, uh, so today we're going to cover some uh, very important techniques with regards to audio loops. Uh, these play a huge part in uh, music production, so we'll be going over the various methods where you can be creative uh, using them. So um, there's obviously loads and loads of techniques uh, where you can be creative with loops, um, but today we're going to go over the ones that we find most useful in uh, everyday production. So um, like so layering sounds, cutting up loops, getting Okay, it sounds a key and and, uh, and so forth. So, uh, so we just we have a lot to cover here. So, we're just gonna it's just look straight into it. So, um, track we're using today, we we do a lot of cutting up with loops and use a lot of these kind of techniques. So, it's it's perfect uh, for the tutorial. So, it's it's uh, this is our new track. Um, it's called Mokum. It's out on different it's different records in early two thousand twelve. So, I'll give you a quick blast of it here. Just a session view. It's a little. There you go, there's just a little bit of hint of the track there. So uh obviously from before you can see we've uh, we've used our audio buses, so that's percussion there, there's six channels going there, uh, hats there's your hats all going there, uh drum group drum and kick, that kind of stuff. So uh so like before in a certain tutorial we are we are we are using the same techniques that we've been uh, showing you the whole time. So um so we're gonna get stuck straight into it here. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start cutting up some loops. So uh, um I'm just gonna solo yeah, this one here. Uh I'll give it a play. Now as you can hear that's only one sound. It's not it's it's not really a full loop but um one of the good things about using loops uh, is you can have a really, really kind of crappy loop, um, which I'm pretty sure this one is, and you can find one little sound in it that you want uh, and extract it from it. So we just you do that using the volume. Uh, we put the volume up where we want to, s where we want. Uh, we put the volume up in the loop where we want the sound to come out, and we just simply have it down in the rest of the loop. So I'll just bring the volume up for the whole loop. There, so you can hear what it sounded like before. Yeah, as, as you can hear, it's it's not a great loop, but there is that one sound in it that fits. So I'll just show you how we did it there. Um, we just click out, make sure your pen tool's on, go to your volume, and just start taking out sounds that aren't needed. Right, so we nearly have it there. I'll just zoom in a bit closer and I'll turn my pen tool off so we can slope the volumes here. If, you, if your volume's drastically dropping um, really quickly uh, and suddenly it creates clipping and stuff and it doesn't sound great. So we'll just slope it in and out there. So, so there you go. So there you go. From all that mess there you have that one nice sound uh, taken out using uh, using the volume method there you can also there's also other ways of doing it you can if if, if you want to take some high end of a loop you just EQ it out you can you can put a you can put a local filter on it um take out all the low and be left with your highs that kind of stuff you can you can be creative that way but uh so gonna move on now uh so we're gonna want move on to uh another loop here on a solo it There you go. It's a pretty prominent loop in the track. It's a big, uh, it's a big percussion hit on it. There, nice, nice sound to it. So, over to the loop. This is the original loop before we mess around. As you can see, it's different. So we're gonna cut it in half. A lot of loops uh, are done on two bars, and both of them are exactly the same. So the second bar is usually irrelevant. So I can go down to crop clip there, and it'll just the selected area it'll it'll take out and it'll get rid of the rest so here we have the one bar over here as you can see it's still different so you can use things called transients and uh, these are transients here Ableton will set transients where um 
where new things come in, new percussion hits come in, it'll set a marker on them. So as you can see here, there'll be markers on our transients here. So we can face ways and move them around. You can move them around all together or if you select that and that it'll stretch them out a bit. Um but for this one we're gonna drag it into the arrangement view. So drag this into the arrangement view here. I'm gonna drag the original sound the one sound we used sorry in the end in as well so you can see what we do with it. So I'm just gonna grab the transient at the start, move it along there. So as you can see it's lined up there with it. Um so I'll just play it there and you sh as you can hear there's a big gap at the start with no sound. We've got these nice reverb tails on these sounds. So I'd like to get a kind of reverb coming up to this. So in the arrangement view we can simply drag sounds around. So just highlight it, drag it out, and I hold control and drag it across. You know, across again. So there we have I'll just play it there, stop it. Now obviously you can put a bit more time into it, get it right, you know, that's the basic theory of it there. We can also we can also drag our sounds, double them up, make more sounds of them, go into this maybe, double click on it, reverse it there. Sorry. Oops. Sorry, I'll just undo that there. If I highlight the whole of the if I hold the whole clip, right click and go to consolidate, it'll make uh it'll make one audio clip out of it and now we can go in here and maybe drag that out. Sorry, go in. Now yeah, reverse it that way. So we can double that up maybe. Just just mess around, you know, be creative with so no, see that doesn't sound great. We can it, if you work around uh, mess with your sounds. You, that they're the options you have. You can re, you can really be creative that way. So um, so that's that's using sounds in your range of view. Consolidate and obviously you can highlight it again. Consolidate and if you want to use it, just drag it back in here now. So uh, that's basically the theory behind what we did here. So um, it's the range of view. It's very handy for doing stuff like that. You can do stuff that you can't do in the session view, as I just showed there. So we'll go back into this sound here. We'll show you about getting key. So I'll just play this here. We use our spectrum for getting sounds and key there on the spectrum. So as you can see, it's peaking right here. If we go into the bottom left, you can see uh, you can see the readings here. It gives you your sound levels, and it also gives you um, your note, a key you're in. So I'll go to here, the peak of it. As you can see, if you look down uh, at the bottom left, it's in D3. This track is in G minor, which is um, which is G A sharp D. So D is perfect for us. Say if you want to go back to C, that's one two back. So we go into the transpose, which is the pitch basically of the sound, bring it back to minus two, play it, it's peaking at C there. So that's basically getting your sounds in key. Uh you also you also need some chord knowledge for this, but it's it's pretty straightforward uh, once you once you get into it. So that's that's your sounds in key. There's also what are the techniques to use? I'll go into one of the hat loops here. Right. Use a fuller one than that. Uh, there we go. So I'll go into this. Now we have a transient on this. I'll just explain what it is. Obviously, we explained what transients were before. They they come up uh, when when sounds happen. You can set your own transients, but the able ones are usually pretty accurate. So um, if I go down here, I basically click on your first option here. This is where it usually is on hundred. So Now I'll bring it down. As you can see, it's chopping. It's basically uh, the volumes are going down from transient to transient. They're sloping down, and as you bring it down, it's more drastic and drastic. It just gives that choppy sound. If you really full loops, messing up your track, transient is a good way of uh, of kind of 
cleaning that up you know there's this plugin it's, it's a good plugin you can get actually it's it's called it's taking, as far as I know it's a free plugin it's called a transient shape but you can use that on your buses and it on say your percussion bus and it'll chop it up a bit give it a really kind of clean kind of sounds good it's good for uh, tech house production it's 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 a really good plugin so uh, be sure to check that out so uh, yeah that's another nice way of doing it obviously uh, actually we were talking before of laying sounds so I'll just play the clap group here that's the clap group here so we four sounds there all combined to make up the clap so that 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 and that so basically like before um we have uh up on we've basically done the volume here on them taking out uh taking out the sound we want and scaring the sounds we don't so yeah it's basically here it's pretty straightforward and as you can see on uh we got that on minus one, the pitch, minus four on that. We've got our keys right. So when it's all played together, that's four sounds in key with each other, laying on top of each other. If they weren't in key, they wouldn't sound right, it would sound off. So that's the value of getting your sounds in key. So um also gonna want to hear is uh quickly is the grooves to call uh, Avon has a nice function in it, the groove function. So we go down here, we go into our groove section, it's notator, it's called a 16 C swing. It, I feel like it's the best, uh, the best groove to a sound. So I'll just play the sound here, and I'll put the groove on it. As you can hear, it made a slight different sound there. If I hit commit, You'll see the waveform moved over. I'll just undo that and then do it again so you can see it. As you can see, it it moves it it, uh, it off it off beat. It puts your some of your sounds sorry off beat and uh, can give a nice sort of swing on sounds. It doesn't work with everything, but uh, when it's done when you get it right, it's 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 a pretty it's a very useful tool. So you can you can mess with your um with your groove in here um. In your groove pool, your time, your quantize, that kind of stuff, until you get a really, really nice sound off it. So I'll just take the groove off it there. Uh, so uh, that that's the groove function there. It's, it's very handy to have. It's nice for rolling bass lines, that kind of stuff. So um, so yeah, and uh, finally we're going to deal with uh, slicing to MIDI here. So we've a loop here. Now this isn't a loop we use in the track, but... Um, it's perfect for uh, perfect for explaining this technique. So like before, cut out all the crap we don't need. Right click, crop it. Now we're gonna right click again, slice the new media track. We're gonna do one slice per transient. The transients here seem pretty accurate. They're all bang on time. You can do every sixteenth note, eight note, whatever. But the transient here uh, looks pretty spot on. So it's gonna make fourteen slices of that. Gonna solo this, go into it, as you can see, 14 notes down MIDI. That's down there, I'll play them on their own. So you can go through these, find, find sounds you like. And, um, just draw a few of them in, mess around with them. Now obviously that doesn't sound great there, but if you obviously put a lot of time into it, you can even just use it as a straight, uh, just take the sound out on its own, use it, just use it on its own, no point in using all the rest of the jump. If it comes to simple stuff like that, you might find a simple straight hat in a loop. Just take the stray hat out, pull it in like that. Yeah, it's it's just a, it's it's like the volume thing. It's another way of extracting extracting sounds from loop. So yeah, it's another way of getting creative. And um, yeah, it's it's a technique we don't use too much. We prefer the volume way or we prefer the uh, the arranging view way. But it's there, and if when it works well, it works very well. So yeah, uh, that's another option there. Plus, it gives you a 
gives you more options to um what we're we on here size five um gives you options to mess around with your decay your attack your sustain so it's so moves it's got advantages to it it, it, it kind of brings your sound into like here like it's simpler or you can do other stuff to it so it uh, it does it does give you a, a wider scope of doing things uh, so it's a very it's a very useful technique there so uh, so yeah I think I think we've covered the main the main parts in it uh, sorry we didn't get enough time to really go into depth to a lot of them but the basic the basic theory of them is there so if you can take these these practices these techniques and uh, use them yourself and just really delve in and be creative uh, you'll uh, you'll be flying you'll be flying on, in your lo your loops in no time as you can see we have we haven't with this track we haven't used really full loops we've mainly just used little bits of loops which is a really good way of doing it it's uh so yeah so just remember to 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 look out for little sounds and loops even if the loop isn't great you'll find you might find that one good sound in it so uh yeah that's it for this tutorial so if you want to listen to uh listen to this full this track in full it's on our soundcloud page which uh the link will be up now the end tutorial uh, and uh as well if you want to email us any queries just uh just drop us a comment on the youtube or send to our gmail so um so yeah thanks for watching and uh trust me